Now let's talk about the Documents folder. Most applications will automatically be mapped to save your files to this folder. To open the Documents folder, you navigate to the File Explorer window and then you double click on Documents. Once you're inside the Documents folder, you'll look for the, the folder that you want to open or the file that you want to open and you would double click on that. I'm going to go to the subfolder that says CL101 Lectures. Double click and now I'm inside of that folder. I'm going to go inside one of these subfolders and what you see are different files listed here. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting because your window could look a little bit different than my window. I'm currently in detail view, but you have a lot of different view options. You have a lot of different ways that you can view your files. So let's say I want to view them in this large icons. Well, you can do that and then you can see the file names underneath, but you don't see the details unless you point at the file. Okay. And then the other one here is large icons and we have medium icons, small icons, list, details, which is the one I was in, tiles, and content. I like to be in detail view so that I can actually sort by the date that I modified things. So I can click date modified and then it just brings the things that I've worked on most recently to the top. So again, that's in detail view and you have these little column headings up here. And when you point at them, you can just click on them. If I want to sort by ascending order, I can sort the file name by ascending order or descending order. You see that? Each one of these columns, if you position your cursor right on the edge of the column, you can actually move the column width. A couple of other cool features. If you want to preview what a file looks like, you can select the file and you can choose this button right here, which will open a preview pane and you could preview the file before you even open it up. The detail pane would instead just show the details of the file and when it was actually created. I'm going to go back to preview. I like that one. Now, if you're not comfortable using these columns to sort, you can go up to the sort by button here and you can sort by these variety of different categories here. So date modified or I can sort by name. So I just did the same type of thing. You can also group icons by the type of file they are. So for example, you could see that um, my lecture notes are typed in Word, but these example files are actually access files. So if I go up to group by and I choose by type, it groups the, the types of files together as you see here. You can also add columns. So for example, I currently have the name, date modified, type, and size columns. If I come up to add columns, I can also choose date created, and then it would show the column over here to the side, the date that that file was created. If this column wasn't fitting all the text, so let's say it was like this, I can choose size all columns to fit and that will resize the columns. Over here, item checkboxes, that has to do with the checkboxes that are next to each file. If I uncheck that, that goes away and then you would just click on the file and select them in that way. File extensions will show the file extension at the end of the file. That just shows what program is associated with the file. If I were to double click on this file right now, it would open in access because this is the file extension for access. If I want to hide this, I can choose hide. And then you also have some other window settings inside of here that you can change. For example, right now, if I were to double click on videos, it opens in the same window it doesn't open a new window, um, but if you were to go into options and you choose change folder and search options, right here it says open each folder in its own window. And if I do that, 
then anytime I'm going to just go back here so I can show you anytime I open up a, a folder it's going to open in its own window so now you can see that this folder opened on top of this window instead of within that window now we're going to talk about selection techniques there are a lot of different ways that you can select your files and I'm just going to show a couple first I'm going to select this file right here you'll notice that if I click onto another file it deselects the previous file I'm going to show you a technique that you can use to select a file and then select another file without deselecting the previous so I've selected this first file I'm going to press and hold the control key down on my keyboard and then I'm going to select on the second file that I want and then I'm going to select the third file that I want so you can see that by pressing the control key down and holding that button down while I carefully click on the other two files I can select more than one file at this point I could copy these files I could cut these files I could delete these files there are numerous things that I can do once I've selected multiple files another technique that you can use to select files is to click on the top file press and hold the shift key down and then click on the last file what you'll see is that it will select all the files in between so the control key lets you skip over files and the shift key lets you select from the top to the bottom if they're in contiguous order another method that I can use if I want to select everything within the window is the control a that is a select all key and that's going to work throughout your Microsoft Office products another method that you can use to select files is to drag over the top of the files I'm just going to click and drag and now you can see that it has selected those files let's go back to this PC and we're going to take a look at the drives now under the devices and drives you're gonna see your hard drive your C drive is your main storage location on your computer this is where your programs are stored so your Windows operating system any programs that you install will be located on this drive next to that I have my SD card plugged in and I have my Google Drive showing here anything I save to this Google Drive will be synced to the Google Drive that I have in the cloud and that way if I'm on the go I'll be able to access my files anywhere that has an internet connection now this is also a location that will show your portable hard drives if you plug those in it would show your flash drive I'm going to go ahead and plug in my flash drive so you can see what that looks like my computer automatically recognizes the flash drive and it assigns it the drive letter E depending on your computer setup your computer might assign a different drive letter this is something that the operating system does for us you do have control over the name of your flash drive for example I can right click on top of the drive and choose rename and I can type in the name that I want there and so I've got my first and last name a lot of us use a flash drive to transport our files from our homes to our office or vice versa so it's important to know how to utilize your flash drive if you want to save a file to your flash drive or a folder you can simply go to that file or folder and send it to your flash drive so I'm going to show you what I mean by that I'm going to go back to that documents folder I'm going to go back inside my CL 101 lectures and I'm going to go back into my access lectures folder and here is my notes for my lecture so if I want this file to be on my flash drive all I have to do is right click my mouse choose the send to option and then look over here for the name of my flash drive and remember it was the E drive so I click on it and it's going to send this file to the flash drive now if I want to check the contents of my flash drive I go back to this PC 
and then I'm going to double click on my flash drive, which is right here, and there's the file that I just sent to this flash drive. Now if I'm done with the flash drive, what I would do is I would close out of the window. To safely unplug your flash drive, what you want to do is you want to come down to this lower right corner and you may have to click on this arrow and you're going to look for this button here that says safely remove hardware and eject media. And you'll want to do this every time you use your flash drive or an SD card or a portable hard drive. You want to make sure that you tell the computer to stop communicating with that device before you unplug it. So I click on top of it and then I choose eject device and it should give me a message when it's safe to unplug but it didn't give me the message in this case so um, I'm pretty safe to unplug it but you know what I'm going to do is so I'm going to go back into my Windows Explorer I'm going to go back into this PC and I'm going to look and you can see that it's not showing my flash drive anymore so it has stopped communicating with the flash drive and yes I can go ahead and unplug it